Next week marks the 75th anniversary to the end of World War II when Japan surrendered to Allied forces aboard the USS Missouri. For a Marine corporal from the state of Missouri, the war ended after one fight, a month-long battle on Iwo Jima where he was wounded several times but survived. Roy Mushrush enlisted in the armed forces on his 18th birthday in Jefferson City, Missouri. It was only then he learned he would be a Marine. The old Marine sergeant said, we'll take that one and that one and that one. It was 1944, and the U.S. was pressing their attack in the Pacific while Roy was finishing up training at Camp Pendleton. We went out in the hills from San Diego, and I was out there about a month or two, just in a pup tent. <laughs> When the 5th Marines 26th Regiment left San Diego, they headed for Pearl Harbor two and a half years after the attack. Oh, it, They've already, it already been been blown, blown away and uh, wasn't cleaned up yet, no. Roy's unit was initially headed for the battle at Wake Island, but the Japanese were so entrenched, U.S. commanders changed course, and in early 1945, Roy finally headed to sea. Destination, we didn't know where. But, really? But it was Iwo Jima where we found that out when we started landing. He was part of the second wave of Marines landing on Red Beach, not far from Mount Suribachi. It was murder. I mean, the bodies everywhere. And the west wave, well, first wave didn't go too far. And they'd blown to pieces. Progress in the thick volcanic sand on Iwo Jima was slow and the fighting fierce, but Roy was on the beach when the Marines raised the flag on the fourth day. I was probably 500 yards up the coast from, I heard the bugle and I started looking around and looking up there and I could see the, uh, there was the flag coming up and couldn't see any reaction really because I had other things on her mind. <laughs> yeah. A lot of fighting at that point. Uh, yeah, it was quite, quite a sight though. The enemy was dug in near the main airstrip and Roy was injured twice from artillery fire, although he'd call it a scratch. Got a piece of shrapnel here in my thigh. The old corpsman did put, put it out, took it out and uh, put some mercuricum on it and a band-aid. Another piece there at another time. And uh, he'd done the same thing. It wasn't a big thing. Then there was the time he was shot in the head, or more specifically, the helmet. It went through the steel helmet into the fiber liner, you know. Uh -huh. And it probably deflected and it went right around the inside of the helmet or ripped the, ripped the uh, liner all the way around to the back and it blew a hole about that big in the back of the helmet. It just knocked me down. It wasn't until the Marines were performing mop-up operations that Roy was seriously wounded. Mm -hmm. I got a bullet through the groin here. He was awarded the Purple Heart and taken off the island. That started a long journey of rehabilitation <laughs> that eventually ended up know. back at Camp Pendleton. Oh, there's what it was just all dressed up in dungarees. Roy was getting ready to get back in the fight a few months later when the war ended. And things were going good, so... And all of a sudden, we dropped the bombs and... He was discharged and moved to Kern County. Roy was married twice and raised a family. He lost his second wife, Mildred, just four years ago. She treated me like I was really something special. Roy still lives in the same Oildale home he bought more than 50 years ago. The neighborhood's a little louder than it used to be, but quite a bit more tranquil than the fight of his life 75 years ago. Now, Roy is currently 94 years old, and as mentioned there, he lost his wife Mildred about four years ago. I asked him what was tougher, the fight on Iwo Jima or losing his wife, and he said it was Mildred. Lives by himself. His daughter comes and lives part-time with him, but he is, you know, very, very independent. Yes. Oh, I loved Great hearing guy. his story. Thank you for sharing that, Mike. Yeah.